Order! Order! The eyes to the right, 286. The nose to the left, 344. The eyes to the right, 286. The nose to the left, 344. So the nose have it, the nose have it. Unlock. Oh, Point of order, the Prime Minister. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I think it should be a matter of profound regret to every member of this House that once again we have been unable to support leaving the European Union in an orderly fashion. The implications of the House's decision are grave. The legal default now is that the United Kingdom is due to leave the European Union on the 12th of April, in just 14 days' time. That is not enough time to agree, legislate for and ratify a deal, and yet the House has been clear it will not permit leaving without a deal, and so we will have to agree an alternative way forward. The European Union has been clear that any further extension will need to have a clear purpose and will need to be agreed unanimously by the heads of the other 27 member states ahead of the 12th of April. It is almost certain to involve the United Kingdom being required to hold European parliamentary elections. On Monday, on Monday, this House will continue the process to see if there is a stable majority for a particular alternative version of our future relationship with the EU. Of course, all of the options will require the withdrawal agreement. Mr Speaker, I fear we are reaching the limits of this process in this House. This House, this House has rejected no deal. It has rejected no Brexit. On Wednesday, it rejected all the variations of the deal on the table. And today, it has rejected approving the withdrawal agreement alone and continuing a process on the future. This Government will continue to press the case for the orderly Brexit that the result of the referendum demands. Yeah. Point of order, Mr Jeremy Corbyn. On a point of order, Mr Speaker, this is now the third time the Prime Minister's deal has been rejected. When he was defeated the first time, the Prime Minister said it's clear this House does not support the deal. Does she now finally accept that the House does not support the deal? Because she seemed to indicate just now that she's going to return to this issue again. On Monday, this House has the chance, and I say to all members, Mr Speaker, the responsibility to find a majority for a better deal for all the people of this country. Mr Speaker, the House has been clear this deal now has to change. There has to be an alternative found. And if the Prime Minister can't accept that, then she must go, not at an indeterminate date in the future, but now, so that we can decide the future of this country through a general election. Point of order, Mr Ian Blackburn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We should all be aware. Uh, oh, do they? Right honourable gentleman must be heard. Mr. Ian Blackford. Here, here, here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We should all be aware of the responsibilities that we all have in this House, the seriousness of the situation that we are in. And I would say respectfully to the Prime Minister, she now has to accept that her deal has been defeated three times. And, and I applaud the members of Parliament on all sides that voted against the government's proposition. It is a bad deal, and we have to find a way out of the crisis that we are in. All of our constituents would expect that. We, we must give ourselves time, and I suggest to the Prime Minister, we now must look seriously at the option of revocation. We need to apply the handbrake to this process. And quite simply, Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister has failed to take this deal forward. She does not have the confidence of the House. Yeah. The Prime Minister has indicated her departure. She should now go, and we should be having a general election. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'll come to the Honourable Lady. Point, point of order, Sir Vincent Cable. Uh, on Monday, it is perfectly possible that the House may indicate a preference for one of the options 
uh, such as a customs union or a confirmatory vote, which are, of course, compatible with the withdrawal agreement. If that is the case, is the Prime Minister then open to listening to the view of the House and considering how we might have a longer extension to explore them? I think the question was perhaps to some degree a rhetorical inquiry. The Right Honourable Gentleman has made his point, but further debate on these important matters will follow next week, and we'll leave it there. Uh, point of order, Heidi Allen. The Prime Minister must now seriously recognise this deal is over. And this House has a responsibility, a serious responsibility on Monday to find a solution to this impasse. There are jobs and livelihoods right across this country at stake now. The way out of this impasse, as many of us have been saying for months and months and months, we must have a people's vote now. Point of order. Yes, I will come to the Honourable Lady first because I saw her first. Point of order. Caroline Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I mean, it, it does beg a belief that the Prime Minister still seems to not recognise a dead deal when there's one right in front of her. It has now been defeated three times, and that is in spite of the procedural games that have been played. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and does she realise yeah, yeah. just how grotesque it looked when, frankly, she was looking as if she was willing to sell out the country's future for the price of some Tory MP careers in replacement for it? The idea that it was somehow sensible for MPs on the other side to say that they would suddenly change their minds about a deal they'd been against for months because they thought they might have some career advantage from it. That is wrong and it is contemptuous of this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, there is a degree of latitude on these occasions, but the Honourable Lady has stretched it excessively. If she wanted to speak in the debate, she might well have caught my eye, but she didn't seek to do so. A point of order, Mr Nigel Dodds. Speaker, could I urge the Prime Minister now to look seriously at what the Right Honourable Gentleman, the Member for Isher and Walton, said earlier in the course of the debate about <laughs> the backstop issue. She knows that remains the problem. She knows that Michel Barnier and Leo Varadkar this week have said that in a no-deal scenario there will be no hard border. Please, Prime Minister, even now, as the Right Honourable Gentleman said earlier, use the time constructively to get that matter sorted out. Thank you. Order. I in invite the whip on duty to move the agenda. I beg to move that this House do now adjourn. Thank you. The question is that this House do now adjourn. And then another one say aye. The contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Order. Order.